is nearly it, but before we go, ladies and gentlemen, it's the return of the big red chair. Thank yeah. You. Real people <laughs> in a real chair. Very funny. <laughs> <laughs> so excited. <laughs> okay, let's see who's up first. Hello. Hello. Hi. What's your name? Carol. Carol, lovely. Where are you from, Carol? Rice slip. Rice slip? <laughs> rice slip, <then. laughs> Rice slip. Uh, what do you do in rice slip, Carol? Uh, I live in rice slip. Oh. <laughs> sure. <laughs> what are you doing on planet Earth, Carol? <laughs> if anyone knows the answer, let me know. <laughs> All right, Carol, you're going to delight us with your best story. Off you go. Okay, so some years ago, um, I had a couple of dogs. One of them, Steffi, um, had suffered a bout of incontinence. So the vet fixed it with some teeny weeny tablets that um, I had to give her in the morning. So anyway, a few days in, I'm rushing around, trying to get ready for work, sort the dogs out. So anyway, I go into the kitchen to give her her tablet, only to find it's not her tablet on the counter, but my contraceptive pill, which means I took the dog's anti-incontinence tablet. <laughs> so I'm standing there thinking, do I phone the vet or do I phone the doctor? <laughs> anyway, turns out I was OK in the end. It's just that every now and again, I just go up to a stranger and sniff their backside. Oh, boo, boo, lost it at the end. Lost it at the end. I love that story for the end. It was still good. It was still good. Uh, oh. All right, uh, they're just uh, wiping down the chair. <laughs> <laughs> the pills didn't work. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay, who's up next? Hello. Hi, Graham. Hi, Mr. Vaughan. <laughs> 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 oh, there's a smile. Uh, what's your name, sir? Uh, name's Kenny. Kenny. And where are you from, Kenny? Um, originally Falkirk, now living down south. OK. And what do you do? I um, do security at vaccine centres. Wow. No one's messing with you, are they, Kenny? <laughs> no. You hit them with a folk guitar. <laughs> um... <laughs> you know him, Ed. <laughs> <laughs> Your gang, you know, you jamming, jamming. Okay, Kenny, off you go with your story. <laughs> so this is um, sort of James Bond themed. I was working oh. a health club back in 99, 2000, uh -oh, and we were, recruit we were recruiting a new sort of restaurant cafe manager. Two or three people got interviewed, and this chap came along, very professional, very experienced, and the girls were very excited. So once he got offered the job, I sat down, chatted about his brother, who turned out to be Timothy Dalton. So. Mark was his younger brother by three years, but spitting image. He got the job. We hatched a little plan for Russell, our fitness manager, who's a James Bond fanatic, goes to the conventions, majorly fanatic on the guy. So next day, Russell comes up to work. Uh, Mark's there in his white shirt, and just for the day, the black bow tie with his back to Russell. Russell goes up to ask for a coffee and just nice and calm. He goes, hi, my name's Russell. Can I get a coffee, please? And he just turns around and goes, hi. Name's Bond, James Bond. Oh. Russell literally fainted on the spot. <laughs> That's a good end, but I'm still... Yeah, there you go. <laughs> that is nearly it. Well, Roy, go. Just time for a visit to the big red chair. Who's there? Hello. Hi, Graham. What's Hi. up, Rick? Uh, uh, not a lot. Uh, <laughs> what, what's your name? Peter. Peter, lovely. Yeah. Uh, where are you from, Peter? Uh, South Africa, born. Yeah. Uh, living here now. OK, what do you do here now, Peter? I'm um, in finance. Super exciting. Mm. Uh, off you go with your story, Peter. Here we go. Right, so this happened uh, a good couple of years ago on a golf tour. Um, it was about nothing. <laughs> 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 Sorry. I mean, I, I'm, right here. I'm 58, but even I'm too young for a golf anecdote. <laughs> right? Golf anecdote? <laughs> no! And the towel's on! We got a golf anecdote. Have we reloaded? Oh, hello. Oh, Hi. Hello. Hi, what's your name? I'm Celia. Z Celia? Celia. Celia, Celia. And where do you live, Celia? I live in London, but I'm from Leeds. From Leeds! And uh, what do you do in London, Celia? I am a vet. <gasps> oh, now, already you yes. know this is going to be an amazing story. <laughs> does it involve being a vet? It does. Excellent, Celia! <laughs> Yeah! <laughs> okay! 
OK, off you go, Celia. So, during the pandemic, we have been consulting outside, so no clients allowed in, going out into the car park, seeing the client, taking the animal in. So, one day, I was going out to see a lovely little black Labrador, had an upset tummy, go out to the client, have a little chat, transpires it has bloody diarrhoea. Apparently, that description wasn't enough, so he thought, I need to show you some photos. So I was like, OK, sure. I think I know what I'm going to get, but go on. <laughs> Scrolling through his photos, then he goes a little bit too far, and I get a full-on dick pic. <laughs> <laughs> he goes back, pretends it never happened. Luckily, I'm wearing a mask, full-on mortified. Pry the dog off him, run inside, tell everyone who is obviously pissing themselves, laughing, <laughs> and then just avoid him ever since, and it's just awful. Hey! Oh, I like that. Yeah, you can walk, you can walk, you can walk. <laughs> yeah. All right. That is, that is nearly all we've got time for, but we can squeeze in a quick visit to the big red chair. Oh, uh, yes. Hello, hello. Tat City. <laughs> I know, those are, are those, are those real tat or sleeves? Uh, they're, they're pretend, yeah, I've just got a top on it. No, they are <laughs> <laughs> Have you got anything on your tummy? Uh, not my tummy, I do have my chest and my ribs, and I'm not going to get those out on national television. No, be you better. no, <laughs> you're just going to get flipped. Uh, <laughs> okay. uh, what's, what's your name? Ian. Ian, and what do you do, Ian? I work in uh, community safeguarding. Oh, OK, mm -hmm. community safeguarding. And uh, where do you do that? I do that in Buckinghamshire. In Buckinghamshire. All right, Ian, off you go with the story. OK, so when I was 19, I was in a rock band and uh, we were playing a, a, a big gig in London. Well, oh. 12, 12 people. Oh. Um, <laughs> Jodie was there, but she thought it was a Coldplay gig. So, that, <laughs> yeah. um, so I was going really well and I thought, I'm going to show off to the 12 people in this crowd by jumping off the stage. So oh. I run off, take a leap, completely mess up the landing and break my leg in four places. Oh! So, um... <laughs> so, I, it's, uh, yeah, awful. And, um, so I get home and I'm finally recovering from it and then I have this awkward realisation that my mum is going to have to help me get dressed because I can't get anything over the cast. Mm -hmm. And, uh, put it off and put it off, but that moment comes where she's having to help me put on my pants. Oh! And, uh... Gets to the top of the legs, and I'm sitting there thinking, just stay silent, it's OK, we're just going to ignore that it's happening. But she stops, turns her head slightly to the side and goes, well, we take after your father. <laughs> oh, 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 oh! <laughs> 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 oh. <laughs> Every shade of wrong. <laughs> Got time for it. If you'd like to have a go in that red chair yourself and tell your story, you can contact us via our website at this very address. Please say a huge thank you to all of my guests tonight Chris Martin and Coldplay, <laughs> Sir Lenny Henry, <laughs> Tom Daly, <laughs> Dame Eileen Atkins, <laughs> Judy Whittaker, <laughs> and Sir Billy Connolly. Join me next week with musical guests Elton John and Charlie Puth, Strictly's Motsi Mabusi, funny man Stephen Merchant, Irish actor Jesse Buckley, and the Oscar winning Eddie Redmayne. I'll see you then. Good night, everybody. Bye bye. Catch Uncle Lenny Henry on Young, Gifted and Black, Tuesday at 9 pm on BBC Four. The competition continues. Tess and Claudia bring the sequence and the sparkles as you want your favourite celebs seriously boogie down for your votes on Strictly Come Dancing. That's tomorrow at 7.10 on BBC One. Chair, <laughs> uh, who's there? Hello. 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 Uh, what's your name, sir? I'm Lars. <laughs> Lars? Yes. Okay, are you a real person, <laughs> Lars? <laughs> are you a people? <laughs> okay, Lars, uh, where are you from? Uh, I'm Norwegian but live here in London. Oh, Such a good accent. God. It is. It's almost like he's putting it on. <laughs> 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 Please never ask me to do that. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Lars, why, why did you move to London? Oh, I moved to England because of my wife. Um, and we just <laughs> moved to London this summer. And I guess, for my sake, it... Uh, he sounds German. No, uh, I'm not German. Norwegian. I'm Norwegian. Thank you. Anyway, I moved to London. I wanted to do something different. I didn't really need to move. I'm working from home, done it for 20 years, and I thought this was doing something different. Yeah. 
Yeah. That wasn't your story, was it? No. No, that's not <laughs> my story. Okay. Off you, off you go with your story, Lars. OK, this is a few years ago. I was uh, probably 18 at the time, and a friend of mine, uh, he, uh, uh, he um, asked me to go into the pharmacy to do a pregnancy test. Uh, or buy a pregnancy test for me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway. Uh, anyway, uh, luckily, there was nobody in there, really, except for the lady serving me, and uh, she said to me, oh, um, I hope you get the result uh, you want. Uh, at this time, I had just got a new girlfriend, and it was the first time I was ever going to visit her that night. And uh, we were in the middle of a movie when uh, her mom came in, and it was the lady from the pharmacy. <gasps> <No>! <laughs> Just time for a quick visit to the big red chair. Who's there? Hello. Hi. Hi, what's your name? Sam. Sam, lovely. And uh, what do you do, Sam? Uh, I'm a finance manager. A finance manager? Where do you do that? Um, in Southwark, uh, London. Oh, Southwark, we know it well. Uh, OK, off you go with your story. Um, well, as long as, as long as go as I can remember from when I was really tiny, I had a mole, quite a distinctive mole, in my belly button. And then when I was 21, I have, was pregnant with my, with my son. And uh, when you're pregnant, you're, as you know, your belly grows and you swell a bit. And sometimes your belly button can pop out. And at that point, I found out that it wasn't actually a mole, but it was an uh, apple pip. <laughs> I must have put it in there when I was little. <laughs> you can walk, lady. <laughs> That's a great story. Is it nearly it? Before we go, we do have time for a quick visit to the big red chair. Uh, who's there? Hello. Hello. Hi. Uh, what, what's your name? Sandra. Sandra, lovely. And where are you from, Sandra? Uh, Bromley in Kent. Bro well remembered. <laughs> um, <laughs> a bit of thinking. And uh, what do you do in Bromley in Kent? Um, I'm a billing analyst and also a dog host. So I have two part time jobs. So. A dog host? Mm -hmm. Is that for like guide dogs training or something um... or just a B and B for dogs? No, it's when people go on holiday or when they did go on holiday and uh, people go in hospital, so I take their dogs in. So oh, and nice. homes Sweet. and stuff. So yeah. yeah. Look oh. after them for weeks on end or a couple of nights or whatever, you know, whatever. Yeah. However long they last. Whatever they last. Um, okay. <laughs> um, so... <laughs> <laughs> Off you go with the story. Um, a couple of years ago, um, my husband and I went to Menorca um, on holiday. Lovely. And... Uh, we were on a plane that, for some reason, our suitcases were in the hole. Uh, they got condensation, quite wet and everything like that, all the clothes in there, mainly the underwear. Um, so when we got to the hotel late that evening, um, I put the underwear out on the balcony um, and there was a... Sa little did we know there was going to be a sandstorm that evening. Um, and all my, all my underwear basically went all over the... <laughs> I do, I that do was tired. worse than Patricia Gucci. <laughs> Why would you do that? I'm really think... angry I'll never know how that yeah. story ended, Graham. <laughs> oh, her knickers were in the swimming pool. <laughs> That's how all stories end. <laughs> and then my knickers were in the swimming pool. Uh, they're just cleaning the chair. They're cleaning the chair to prevent... Because, you know, it'd be awful to have that happen to you and get COVID. So... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That'll be a double whammy. <laughs> so, uh, here they are. Oh, what was that? Hello! Hello! Hi, what's your name? My name is Claire. Claire? Where are you from, Claire? I am from County Clare in Ireland, but I live in London. OK, Claire from Clare. And uh, what do you do in London, Claire? From Claire? I work <laughs> for a very large construction company, Irish construction company, as a training team leader. OK, training team leader. This is Claire from Claire. Off you go with your story, Claire from Claire. Thanks. So, <laughs> when I was a teenager, myself and my cousin decided to go for a little drive in her car in a very, very busy street. And it in was Clare. one way. In, in County Clare, yes. yes. It was very, very busy. It's a busy street in Clare, Adam. Yeah. <laughs> and for some reason, my cousin had a megaphone in her car. <laughs> So, <laughs> I, I looked to my left and I saw Rod Stewart. 
Oh. But it wasn't Steady. actually Rod Stewart. It was just a man that was the absolute head of him. <laughs> but I decided that I wanted to cause a scene, so through the megaphone, I started to shout that, Rod Stewart, it's Rod Stewart. Um, and we proceeded to cause an absolute stampede and the poor man was inundated with people looking for pictures, <laughs> autographs. Well, but I met you. him afterwards and he actually thanked me and said it was the absolute best day of his life. Oh, you let her walk? Yeah. yeah, go on, you can walk there. Thank you. <laughs> uh, oh, nearly it. Well, we go, just time for a visit to the big red chair. Uh, who's there? Hello. Hi. Oh, it's the lady in the strawberry cardigan. Hello. Hi. Uh, what's your name? Bex. And where are you from, Bex? New Zealand. So. New Zealand. Lovely. And but you're living here now, or yeah. Yeah, you're not on holiday, that's for sure. No. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Bex. Off you go with your story. Okay, so um, I was just lounging on the sofa watching telly. I had my little dog sleeping next to me. He was lying on his back, and um, he starts kind of like twitching and wiggling in his sleep's fine, he's having a little dream, but suddenly, out of nowhere, some liquid comes oh, spurting. No. <laughs> I can't apologise enough. <laughs> I don't think we've ever had dogs spoken a story before, but that's... <laughs> Wait, what? A doggy wet dream? What oh. was that? Yeah, a dog in a wet dream. Oh, cool. <laughs> got a little Ew. imagination. It could, <laughs> could have been pee. It could have been. It could have been pee. It could have been, been pee. Great mind. I mean, that's probably what? more embarrassing yeah. for the poor dog. <laughs> Wet itself. Uh, uh, anyway, sorry. Oh, hello. Hi. Hi. What's your name? Alex. Alex, lovely. And where are you from, Alex? New Zealand. Oh, New Zealand? Yes. Do you know Bex? No, I met her tonight, though. Oh, <laughs> friend for life. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I saw that look. <laughs> 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 and what do you do here, Alex? Uh, I work for an advertising agency. OK, what sort of clients? Like, sexy clients or dull? Pharmaceuticals. Dull. OK. <laughs> uh, off you go with the story. Uh, so, uh, as you know, I'm from New Zealand. Uh, however, my grandma, she was born and raised here in London. Excellent. So we decided the family, um, when she passed away, that it will be quite poetic that her kind of final send-off would be um, in a double-decker bus. So the day came to take her to the crematorium, and then, um, but no-one kind of thought to measure the coffin versus the door. Um, <laughs> and, <laughs> and it was oh, it was old bus, so it had a pole in the middle, so we couldn't get her, get her in there, but we didn't have <laughs> any other option and it was kind of either put her in the boot of the car or kind of <laughs> try and figure out the bus. So we ended up strapping her in with some bungee cords. <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't end there, sadly. Um, it would, the whole point of the, of the bus was that so the whole family, there was like, you know, 16, 17 of us would all kind of be able to be with her on the 40-minute drive. Of course. Um, so we then, me, my cousins and aunties and stuff all proceeded to jump over my grandmother's coffin to get into the bus um, <laughs> and then jump back off again uh, when it came to arriving at the crematorium. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm going to let her... Let her walk? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You're walking. You're walking, yeah. Alex. Well done. Hey. <laughs> Let's find out who's up next. Hello. Hi. Hi, what's your name? I'm Alison. Alison, lovely. Where are you from? Uh, Northumberland. Northumberland. And uh, do you live down here now or are you just on a day trip? No, I've just come down specially for the show. <gasps> oh, oh, how exciting. And uh, what do you do in Northumberland? I retired in August after 37 years in the NHS. Oh, well done. They don't need people anymore. Retire. <laughs> yeah, yeah, take it easy. Don't go near that leap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, I can't. No, yes, no, yes, can't. Yes, you won't be flipped. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, retired from the NHS. <laughs> 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 All right. <laughs> Set a really oh. horrific story now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, off you go with your story. OK, so I'm away for the night with my boyfriend at the time. We've been out drinking, we go back to the hotel, and we've had lots to drink. I wake up in the early hours and I really need the loo. And instead of going into the bathroom, I'm disorientated and go out the hallway. The door shuts behind yeah, yeah. me, I'm knocking, I'm banging, he's in an alcoholic coma and won't wake up. And I think, oh, my God, I am going to wet myself. <laughs> what do I do? So with my best pelvic floor, I waddle along to the corridor and there's stairs that are carpeted, thank goodness, and I slightly deposit a bit of pee on each step <laughs> for three <laughs> flights <laughs> of stairs. <laughs> and this man appears. <laughs> And he says, 
can I help you? And I went, oh, I'm locked up in my room. And he went, I know, I'm the night porter and I've been watching you on the CCTV. <laughs> Story. You can walk! Oh, excellent! Is nearly it before we go. Uh, just time for a visit to the big red chair. Who be there? Oh, well, hello! Hi. Hi, it's nice and Christmassy back there, isn't it? Yes, very. Yeah. <laughs> What's your name? Uh, Hattie. Hattie, lovely. And uh, what do you do, Hattie? Um, I'm a journalist. Uh oh. Uh. <laughs> okay, off you go with the story. Um, so I was on a night out with all of my girlfriends back home where I'm from. I just turned 18 and I was still really excited that I could go out and use my ID. So we went out to this bar. I'm queuing up for the, to get in. And as I get to the doorman, I whip out what I think is my ID and hand it to the bouncer. Um, and I look down at my hand and I've actually handed him a clean sanitary towel. <laughs> and was dying of embarrassment. And instead of just putting it back into my handbag and, you know, just, you know, breezing past it, I literally just stuffed it under my elbow and stood there. <laughs> stood there. <laughs> it promised more, that story. It promised more. It just you, wasn't it. It wasn't oh, it. Oh, 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 no, it just I wasn't thought it. you were looking at me like, you no, horrible no, 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 old man. It. <laughs> Where's the punchline? Okay, good, good. Yeah, I'm yeah, glad yeah. we're on the same page. It, good, had, yeah. prom it had promise. Yeah. And I don't. Yeah. I actually don't think it did. No. <laughs> yeah. It was just dry from the beginning. I was like, Here well, we at go. least it was dry. <laughs> um, <laughs> No, I, I just like the bit when she went, a clean sanitary towel. Well, what, do you to. pack used ones away? <laughs> luckily, luckily, I've gone into that pouch in the bag. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. <laughs> uh, who's up next? Here we go. Hello. Hi, I'm Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> this promises so much. Uh, where are you from, Ryan? I'm from Manchester originally, but I live in North London. OK, and what do you do? I'm a model and a disabilities advocate. OK, ladies and gentlemen, these brothers are really like it. OK, Ryan. We have high hopes for your story, Ryan. <laughs> so, Off you go. So I was about eight or nine, and I was on a cruise with my family, and I was really, really hungry. So I was like, Dad, can we go get a pizza? And he was like, yeah, great. Um, so I got handed um, a slice of pizza on a paper plate, um, and the slice of pizza was actually bigger than the paper plate. So I had to hold it with my hand underneath the plate. And as we went upstairs with my dad, um, on the outside deck, a gust of wind caught the pizza, and I watched, and the pizza basically slapped a lady in the face before it went <laughs> over the side of a boat. And obviously I was mortified, didn't know what to say. People were looking around and kind of laughing. And then the husband kind of turned to me and said, it's okay, son, she needed a shower anyway. And... <laughs> He, no, like, yeah. let, 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 you know, let's be honest, the story was shit, but he, <laughs> the he delivered it. Yeah, he delivered yeah, it. Yeah. He no, delivered it really I well. I liked him a lot. I liked, yeah, I, I, liked, liked I liked knowing that it was a paper plate, you know. Yeah. <laughs> that was smaller than the pizza. The pizza. <laughs> there was a lot of detail in it. It was a lot of detail. A terrible story, but a yeah. lot of detail in it. <laughs> yeah. OK, who's up next? Oh, hello. Hi. Hi. Christmas jumper oh. came early. <laughs> uh, what's your name? Tracy. Tracy, lovely. And where are you from, Tracy? Uh, from Gosport in Hampshire. Oh, lovely, got the full address. And uh, what do you do in Gosport in Hampshire? <laughs> um, I'm actually in the Royal Navy Reserves. <gasps> OK. Ah. So could you be called up at any moment? Well, you never know, especially with this COVID situation. I know. Well, listen, if your phone goes in the middle of the story, we understand. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know. Sorry, the nation calls. Uh, OK, off you go with your story. Uh, this is back, actually, when I was in the Royal Air Force. I was on an expedition. I She's climbed... lived, hasn't she? Air Force, <laughs> maybe? Climbing Kilimanjaro, and uh, it was... Climbing Kilimanjaro? <laughs> <laughs> Where's her documentary, Joan? Where's her documentary? So, we were doing the ascent at midnight. Um, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> effectively, oh it was the coldest September they'd had in 40 years. And so, as we were ascending, um, a lot of people were getting altitude sickness, headaches, feeling sick. Yeah. I had to be different, and I needed a poo. So, <laughs> it was um, one of those. As I squat with my trousers down, obviously, the, the cold air blows up my butt, and I stop halfway, so the poo is halfway. And <laughs> as I was. As I, I, was we've had enough, we've had, yeah. I. Uh, uh, 
Yeah. I felt like a doctor. No. Finally, it for before we go, uh, just time for a visit to the big red chair. Uh, who's there? Hello. Hello. Hi, what's your name? Hi, my name's Alice. And uh, what do you do, Alice? I'm a HR specialist. Ooh, she's a specialist. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, some people just work at it. She's a specialist. <laughs> OK. And where, where do you do that? Um, a Netherlands bank called Rabobank. OK. Yeah. I've never heard of it, <laughs> but their HR is second to none. <laughs> I'll tell you that. <laughs> OK, off you go, Alice. Um, so I was backpacking in Vietnam, and an airline had just lost all my luggage, so I bought a new pair of flip-flops to wear. But I was staying in this hostel where you leave your shoes outside the hostel before you go in, and in the morning I came down and I couldn't find my flip-flops. Presumably someone had nicked them. So I eyed up another pair of flip-flops and thought, oh, they'll do. I went about my day in these new pair of flip-flops, came back standing outside the hostel, um, and I'd met some new friends, so I was standing around with them. And this girl marched up to me, pointed at my feet, and just goes, are those my shoes? <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, they are, and just took them off and gave them back to her. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how old Alice is, <laughs> but how is that the funniest thing that's ever happened to her? I mean, uh, that is a life not lived. <laughs> <laughs> it's just time for a visit to the big red chair. Uh, hey. oh, all right. Uh, who's there? Who's there? Hello. Hi. What's your name? Augustine. Augustine, lovely. And where are you from, Augustine? I am originally French, but I grew up in London. Okay. And what do you do here, Augustine? I am an advertising creative. Oh, ooh. like things we might have heard of. Um, stuff for like Bombay Sapphire and lots of periods ads. Don't know if you've seen any of those. I've seen ads for periods. <laughs> I really want one now. <laughs> um, <laughs> they really know. They're really selling them. <laughs> Good work, Augustine. Um, <laughs> off you go with your story. Mm. Um, so when I was ten, the police came to my house to arrest my parents because <laughs> I love. <laughs> I like how it starts with so, so. Yeah, I love that. That's great. OK. Uh, because I'd written a quiz called the Horny Hamster Quiz, and I'd posted it on my Bebo and also obviously emailed a link to all my mates who were also 10 years old. Uh, but the problem was the police just could not believe that an actual child had written this quiz because it had questions like, would you fuck a hamster? Yes, no, maybe. <laughs> if you had to fuck a rodent, would it be a hamster, a mouse, a gerbil? Obviously, the correct answer was hamster. Um, <laughs> would you... Uh, what do you call a hamster having an orgasm, a hamstergasm? Obviously, I was 10, so my wordplay was sort of hard to scratch. Um, and so I was summoned to the living room uh, where I saw my mum and two policemen holding full transcripts of the quiz. And my very distressed and also very French mother was screaming, Oh, does she know? <laughs> um, and so, luckily, I quickly confessed to my crime and neither of my parents went to jail for hamster-related grooming felonies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you can walk, obviously. <laughs> well done. Right, uh, that's nearly it. Before we go, just time for a quick visit to the big red chair. Hello. Hi. Hi, what's your name? Ellis. Ellis? Alice, sorry. Alice. Alice. Sorry, Alice. Where are you from, Alice? New Zealand. Oh, my oh. God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you know Rose Matafeo? No, I don't. What? How? <laughs> <laughs> you don't know who I am? <laughs> uh, no. uh, I find that hard to believe. <laughs> where, where are you, you from guys? in New Zealand? Auckland. I'm from Auckland. What school did you go to? A small school called St Dominic's College. I know St Dom's. <laughs> uh, yeah, what school wait, did you go to? I went to Auckland Girls Grammar. Oh, everyone knows Auckland Girls. Everyone knows. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got a reputation. <laughs> uh, wait, so how old are you? I'm sorry. I, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, t I'm, I'm just interviewing her now because I, I swear to God I know you. <laughs> I think we do have friends of friends. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, she's admitting it now. <gasps> I, oh, I also... My favourite thing about you, Alice, is that you're wearing your coat. <laughs> <laughs> like you're just going to be flipped and leave. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's, uh, let's hear her story. Yes. Let's hear your story. Off you go, Alice. OK, um, so a few years ago, my boyfriend and I went on a holiday to Vietnam. Mm. Um, yeah, and I quickly learnt when I arrived in Vietnam that I don't do very well in heat and humidity. Um, so we went on a, um, a day trip down to the Mekong Delta, which is about 
four hours outside of Ho Chi Minh City. Um, I was melting, <laughs> melting the entire day. Um, and then on the way back, um, the um, aircon in the bus just completely <laughs> broke. I then proceeded to have uh, a big meltdown. OK, Alice, remember you're representing our country here. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, snappy. Yeah. Um, so, bus pulls over. I refuse to get on. I may or may not have said, you don't understand. I'll die if I get back on that bus. Um, arrive back in Ho Chi Minh. <laughs> wake up. Realise I have um, left my phone somewhere at the oh, temple. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's really it. Before we go, time to visit the big red chair. Now, I, I, you haven't been here for, I think, nine years. Do you remember the red chair? Uh, oh, yes, yes, yes. The chair. So they come on, they tell their best story, <laughs> and then we see if it was. <laughs> OK? <laughs> OK. OK, you'll see, you'll see. Hello. Oh, hello. Hi, what's your name? Claire. Claire, lovely. OK, and where do you live, Claire? Um, I live in London, but oh. I'm originally from Cumbria. Oh, lovely. And uh, what do you do? I'm an assistant psychologist in an adolescent hospital. Wow, the cleverest audience member we've ever had. <laughs> uh, OK, Claire, off you go with your story. OK, so this happened many moons ago when I was a PhD student in Milan, Italy, <laughs> and my research project <laughs> was to make transgenic mice, which in the mid-90s was kind of quite a new technology. So I worked really hard for some no, years. No, it's just like, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> So I worked really, really hard for three years and finally I had my transgenic mice and I just had to analyse them, a couple of months' work and then I was done. But the company I worked for was having some problems and they'd made some people redundant. Anyway, I go into work looking for my mice and they're not there. So I said, where are they? And they told me that one of the technicians that had been made redundant had stolen them oh my and God. fed them to his pet snake. Oh. So my PhD was eaten by a snake. I mean, that's an amazing story. You can walk. Yeah. You can walk. I just want to know... <laughs> After having eaten transgenic mice, did the snake get superpowers? <laughs> <laughs> Very good.